Hi, in this video uh, I will show you how to build uh, the insulating uh, transformer uh, and why actually we should use the uh, isolating transformers. I will just quickly just say how it works. We have a three wires in our mains. That's life, neutral and earth. Earth and neutral, they're connected somewhere together. And that's one potential. So in our socket, uh, the danger side, of course, is alive. Why is that? Because we're just standing on the ground what actually is one potential in our sockets so we become the same potential so, so if we're going to touch the live side we will get electric shock because of course the electrons will flow through our body the idea of the isolating transformer is to to put the transformer in here with ratio 1 to 1 so we will have a 230 volts on the primary side and 230 volts on the pri on the secondary side but we actually we isolate it by this transformer from the mains so we are still grounded but we are not one of the potentials for this voltage on the secondary side so if we're going to touch one of the wires, we will not get electric shock. But this is very important. We can only touch one wire at a time. Because of course between these two wires, there's 230 volts. So if we're going to touch both, we will get electric shock. And this is quite dangerous. So this is the idea for safety. What is the other idea? Uh, this is to save our equipment. For example, if we need to measure something with our oscilloscope, uh, you must remember that outside shield of the probes is grounded. This is the same potential and is connected somewhere here together with neutral. So, if we have no isolating transformer on the way. If we didn't connect the one probe here and then the negative probe to other wire, we're gonna make a shortage inside in the oscilloscope in our mains. So probably we're gonna blow the oscilloscope. So we absolutely, we cannot use the oscilloscope without isolating transformer. Another thing is, uh, if we need to test any faulty equipment and we're not sure if that's going to trip uh, our, our fuses, then again, by using the isolating transformer, we can safely test the equipment. There's a two reasons. Uh, one, it won't trip the, the fuses, so we don't going to shut the whole power for our house or workshop. And the second thing is, if the device is faulty and uh, have a short circuit, uh, the maximum power what the transformer can generate uh, will be, for example, 300 watts. So this will give you like 1.5 amps so if the faulty equipment will take more than one and a half amps the voltage will start dropping down when the voltage goes down the device will be probably shut off uh, of course that's going to create a lot of heat on the transformer and on the end can uh, burn the wires on the transformer but of course we will have the uh, safety fuses on the way, uh, we will have a safety uh, temperature sensor and of course if we're testing something we're not going to switch it on and leave it for a while we're going to just test for a few seconds and see what's what was going on 
All right, so let's uh, draw the uh, the schematics how we're going to build the transformer. So here's our main. Of course, what I didn't mention on the previous uh, page, uh, we can connect the earth in our case. This will be our case for a uh, transformer. Uh, and we can connect the earth. This is life, neutral and earth. Uh, we can connect the, the air to the whole case, to the transformer, but on the secondary side, we cannot connect the air. Because if we have, a, for example, a faulty device here, what we want to test, and if we're going to connect this device with the air here, then we're going to do basically the same thing. That's going to... That's going to... Uh, that's going to be one potential of our mains. So, absolutely, we cannot ground the secondary side. Okay, we can use it, uh, any transformers. Uh, of course, we can buy on the market uh, the proper isolating transformers. So, the ratio is one to one, and usually uh, you have. On the wires, the, the, there is some marks as an input and output uh, because, of course, there will be some losses on the transformer, so the, the transformers are not perfect. Uh, so, there is a few windings different, a few uh, turns on the windings uh, just to compensate the losses. So, you will always get the same voltage on the end. But if someone don't have the the proper transformer because the transformers are quite expensive. The the best ones are toroid toroidal transformers, uh, but you can build the isolating transformer from two identical transformers. What I mean identical, uh, the voltage, the supply voltage the, on the primary side must be same, and the, on the secondary must be same on both. Okay, so in this case, I have a. a 415 volts on the primary on these two transformers and 24 volts on the secondary uh, that's mean uh, we actually we could use these two and the looks actually the same big so I believe there will be the same power on both actually on this one this is a 25 volt amperes so I'm there's nothing on this one, but I, I believe it will be similar. Uh, so we can use this two, and we have to connect them with the back side. So the secondary side with the secondary side originally on the second transformer, and then we're going to supply 230 volts to the primary side. We will get it to 24 volts on the secondary side. And then we can connect the original secondary side to 24 volts. So we're going to supply the 24 volts here. And then we're going to get it 230 volts on the primary side. Yes, that, that's possible. These two transformers won't give you uh, much power. Uh, but I've got a bigger transformer here. Uh, and this is a bit different. This one here, this is a three-phase transformer. What actually have a three separate coils. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use two of these coils as the two separate transformers. Now the wires are connected together. Uh, because that only works on three phases and there is no neutral and the neutral is connected somewhere there from all three uh, coils so I'm gonna use a similar uh, transformer because this one still works so uh, I'm gonna leave it uh, but I've got one faulty when actually one coil is gone and I'm gonna use the other one so this is actually uh, the three-phase transformer. 
at the moment uh, the three ends of the primary coils are connected together and that's creating a neutral and of course we have a phase one phase two and phase three but we're going to use only one phase and neutral so we're going to put connect the one phase here and neutral here and that's 230 volts on the secondary side I will get 24 volts of course AC so if I can connect the secondary side with the secondary side of the second transformer or the second coil then I will get 230 volts AC on the second coil the very important thing in my case because everything is on the one core I must connect the the secondary sides opposite way so the uh, end of one winding with the beginning of the second and the beginning of the first with the end of the second this is about the magnetic field if you have two different transformers you don't have to worry about the connection you know, on the, the secondary sides so yeah that's just the theory my transformer have actually few wires uh, from each winding so I can control the voltage uh, the wires are marked as a plus 5 volt uh, plus, uh, sorry plus 5 percent uh, in our case there will be 230 volts and minus 5 percent so this was basically to set the output voltage uh, but in our case that will help to get the 230 volts right let's do it We have a switch here, uh, this is the supply cable, uh, the wire goes through the uh, thermal switch, uh, then goes back to the first transformer, uh, wires from the second transformer goes through the fuse and to output and I just put my socket already on the wall, it's here. That's the control one, but actually I can control uh, the voltage. Uh, and actually this is connected to uh, the, my my other socket, just uh, the enclosure was printed out. Uh, and the socket installed, so you can see the voltage, the current. Let's see how it works. Let me connect the plug with the 30 watts bulb as before. Uh, and let's see if everything works plug in start there you go it shows 30 watts 0.13 amps right that's good let's put the cover back on and job done